Welcome everyone. Today I'm talking about borderline personality disorder, which I will refer to as BPD or borderline for short. And I will also explain why BPD is one of the most challenging mental disorders to diagnose and treat. I will cover the diagnostic criteria, focusing on how these symptoms manifest in reality and in relationships. I'm Lise LeBlanc and as a therapist for over 20 years and a life coach for over a decade, I have worked with many clients diagnosed with borderline personality disorder as well as their partners and family members. This video is for informational purposes only and it is not intended to replace professional supports and services. And if you like this video, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel, comment or share it as this lets YouTube know that it is valuable content. BPD is a serious and complex mental disorder and it is classified as a cluster B personality disorder, which is the dramatic, emotional and erratic category or classification. And it's estimated that between one and 2% of the population have BPD. However, the good news about BPD is that it is considered treatable. Although not curable, with intensive therapy, studies show that more than 50% of people, and sometimes a lot more depending on the study, do recover from BPD, meaning their symptoms improve to a degree that they no longer meet the diagnostic criteria for the disorder, but they may still experience certain symptoms and or need to continue to work hard at managing them. So the bad news is that by the time someone finds out what is going on with them and goes for treatment, assuming that they receive the correct diagnosis, accept that diagnosis, and that treatment for BPD is accessible and affordable. And by this time, many areas of the person's life have already been severely impacted, often leaving massive losses related to relationships, jobs, educational opportunities, and so much more. I often hear comments like, all women are borderline. But if this is your theory, you have no idea what borderline personality disorder is or what it does to the person experiencing it or their loved ones. This is an intense roller coaster of erratic emotions, moods, and behavior that can include self injury, suicide attempts, hospitalizations, possibly even legal issues due to impulsive and risky behavior. Not all people with BPD experience it as severely or have all of the symptoms. In fact, only five of the nine criteria need to be met in order for a person to qualify for the diagnosis, making it so that two people with BPD could have as little as one symptom in common. Statistically speaking, just taking those five out of nine criteria, there are 126 possible combinations. To further complicate matters, 85% of people with BPD also qualify for another mental health diagnosis. For example, it is estimated that 96% of people with BPD also have a mood disorder sometime during their lifetime. 88% have an anxiety disorder. 47 to 56% of patients with BPD have a co-occurring PTSD or trauma-related disorder. 30 to 50% have a co-occurring substance use disorder and up to 40% will also qualify for a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. These are just some examples. All this to say that BPD rarely stands alone, making it difficult even for experienced mental health professionals to figure out exactly what's going on. So if you are trying to self-diagnose or if you start comparing notes with someone else with BPD, you may think, that's not me, I mustn't have BPD because I don't have those symptoms. I will talk about the different types of BPD in another video. But before I get into the specific criteria for BPD, let me just first say that in order to qualify for any personality disorder, there must be an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that is inflexible and deviates markedly from the expectations of the individual's culture. It happens across a range of contexts leading to significant distress and it has an onset that can be traced back to adolescence or early adulthood. 
Plus, this pervasive pattern of behavior and thought cannot be better explained by another mental disorder or a substance abuse problem. And it must also cause impairments in at least two of the following areas of the person's life. Number one, cognition, which is their way of perceiving themselves, other people, and events. Affect, which is the range of intensity and uh, emotional responses. Number three is interpersonal functioning, which is their ability to create and sustain relationships and impulse control is a fourth one. So at least two out of those four criteria that I just mentioned must be present in order to qualify for a diagnosis of any personality disorder, including BPD. So, you know, for people who are asking, my partner only shows three of the symptoms, can they still have BPD? The answer is no. Um, they may have borderline tendencies, but not qualify for that disorder. So let's talk now about the specific criteria for borderline personality disorder, keeping in mind that you only need to display five out of the nine criteria in addition to the general criteria I just mentioned, as well as a few other things that I will explain at the end. So number one is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. BPD sufferers have an anxious attachment style that tends to be very rejection sensitive, which causes them to behave in wild, chaotic, and distraught ways to any slight perception of rejection or abandonment. Now, this is not a normal proportional reaction. This is a bomb exploding, a volcano erupting. So a real or perceived abandonment could be as slight as you arriving five minutes late, looking in the direction of an attractive person. It could be even something more minor, or it could be something based in reality, like you talking about ending the relationship. But the reaction to this rejection or abandonment is massive. It is frantic, like fire and electricity running through that person's veins as though you were trying to annihilate them. It's like you were throwing a newborn baby into a dumpster and that baby is them and you are the monster that would do such a thing. So these frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment are based in legitimate distress. The second criteria is a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. Again, this is an extreme, intense, and unstable pattern of interpersonal relationships where the person puts you on a pedestal, loves everything about you, and then hates you, can't stand you, and treats you like the scum of the earth. With BPD, this alternates back and forth. So there is a massive push and pull from you are the best to you are the worst, and sometimes in a very rapid cycle. And often the shift from idealizing to devaluing you can happen in response to what may seem to you as something very minor and sometimes completely out of the blue. Now again, let me say, not all people with BPD experience all of these symptoms. That's very important to note. Okay, so number three is identity disturbances. And these are marked and persistent, unstable self-image or sense of self. So the BPD sufferer has a very blurry and unstable sense of self. They have a bad, broken, unworthy, shame-filled self that they are constantly trying to annihilate, abandon, and separate from. And they work really hard to distract and distance themselves from this disowned, abandoned, and pain-filled self. Um, so their identity and their sense of self is constantly shifting under their own feet as they try to get away from this terrible self that they believe themselves to be, making them like chameleons, changing, changing their interests, their goals, their careers, their cities, their relationships, their values, and trying to change their self and find one that is acceptable. Number four is impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. So for example, spending, substance abuse, reckless driving, sex, binge eating, 
Um, impulsivity refers to a rapid, unplanned reaction to a situation or stimuli before fully processing the information and with a lack of regard for the long-term consequences. The BPD sufferers' thoughts, feelings, and actions are inconsistent and unstable. So one moment things are good, they feel in control, they may feel positive, and, and they truly do in that moment. But then, boom, the bomb goes off, and even though they may have made a decision or an agreement while they were rational to refrain from certain impulsive behaviors that they may know they're prone to, once they are triggered and emotionally dysregulated, all deals are off the table. There are no breaks. The rational executive functions are offline, inaccessible, and there is no space between stimulus and response. There's no ability to analyze and make a sound decision that would work best in the long term. Number five, recurring suicidal behavior, gestures or threats, or self-mutilating behavior. 70% of BPD sufferers will attempt suicide at least once in their life and 8-10% to of people with borderline personality disorder die by suicide. Those with BPD account for 18% of all suicides. This is higher than any other disorder. And in fact, 65-80% to engage in some sort of non-suicidal self-injurious behavior which can include cutting, hair pulling, burning, um, self-hitting, headbanging, and a lot of people will say that these are ways to manipulate their cries for attention, but the functions of these behaviors typically are much more complex, which I will discuss in part two of what is BPD in a different video, where I'll explain the types of BPD and the causes of BPD. So number six is affective instability caused by reactivity of mood. For example, intense episodic anxiety, irritability, and this can last a few hours, um, but rarely more than a few days. And this is often referred to as a BPD episode, and it is extreme instability of mood and emotional dysregulation that goes from zero to a thousand in a flash. Number seven is chronic feelings of emptiness. And this is a feeling of, of being in a void, a numbness, an abyss. It's feeling lost, isolated, and emotionally frozen. Number eight is inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. So this can be frequent displays of temper, constant anger, recurring physical altercations, so this can look like irritability, hostility, antagonism, constantly contradicting, taking everything you say as an attack, and it can be a lot more extreme as in the case of BPD rage, which can be very dramatic, very damaging. And again, it's not like a little firecracker going off. This is like a nuclear bomb of mass destruction. And BPD rage can lead to mental, emotional, or physical abuse towards themselves or towards others. So it could be swearing, name calling, throwing, breaking things, hitting, um, and much, much worse. Um, when turned inward, it can be self-mutilation or other forms of self-punishment. Number nine is transient paranoia or severe dissociative symptoms. And many clients with BPD will at some point wonder if they have some type of multiple personality dissociative identity disorder because they will have periods of depersonalization where they feel out of self and detached from their own thoughts, their own body, as well as periods of derealization where they feel disconnected and detached from their environment as though they were in a movie. And this can feel like you're in a dream or just kind of be a situation where you're somewhere but you don't know how you got there or have a conversation then you genuinely do not remember anything about it. There can also be other paranoid symptoms including delusions which could be seeing or hearing things that are not there, perceiving something in a completely distorted way from reality. Although this symptom is relatively common in BPD, it is rarely talked about. But it is estimated that 26% of people with BPD have paranoid delusions and up to 80% report episodes of depersonalization, derealization or some sort of dissociation.
The label borderline personality disorder comes from doctors who identified this disorder as being on the border between neurosis and psychosis. The word neurosis or neurotic was used to describe mental, emotional, or physical reactions that are drastic and irrational. At its root, a neurotic behavior is an automatic unconscious effort to manage deep anxiety and fear. Whereas psychosis is a condition that affects the way your brain processes information. It causes you to lose touch with reality and see, hear, or believe things that are not real. So that's where borderline comes from. So borderline personality disorder is a pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationships, self-image, emotions or affect, and impulsivity, which impairs interpersonal functioning and intimacy. This is a disorder that requires intensive, long-lasting therapy and continuous management. It's not easy, it's not fast, but it's also not impossible. So if you suspect you have BPD, have been told you have BPD, regardless of other diagnoses or problems you may have, speak to a mental health professional to find out what resources and treatments are available in your area. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my playlist on borderline personality disorder.